is Jonathan, Jonathan Herps, uh, founder and CEO of Scale Up Growth Partners. Um, welcome again to my stories of Scaling Up um, series where I chat with owners, managing directors, founders, and business, lead, business leaders of scaling companies. It centers around their entrepreneurial journey so far um, and their aspirations. So today I'm, I'm uh, speaking with Edwina Sh- um, Sharrett. I hope I'll pronounce it uh, correctly, yeah. Edwina. Uh, founder and CEO of Birthbeat, and welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Looks like look, looks like there's going to be an interesting conversation given what's what's um, on the desk behind you. <laughs> Nothing like having a little pelvis. Exactly right. <laughs> okay, so let's start there. Um, Edwina, what do you do? Uh, thanks, Jonathan. I'm a registered midwife. I live in rural New South Wales on Gamilaroi Country, a town called Tamworth. Oh, yes. And I am a registered midwife and a registered nurse, and I'm the founder of a company called Birthbeat, and we teach online birth education and online baby and child first aid classes. Oh, fabulous. Hmm. So essentially where people can't, where women can't, and women can't get yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. It actually started for rural, regional and remote women. Um, something that I'm really passionate about is access and equity to healthcare and that that shouldn't be compromised just because of your postcode. Mm-hmm. But we launched about 18 months before COVID and we were definitely one of the COVID winners in that we were really well positioned. We had good networks with hospitals and health providers. And so COVID made us scale up, essentially, for want of a better word. Um, that is- Probably a lot faster than what we'd planned, um, but it's been a pretty crazy and fun ride. So, I mean, it's not hard to, to ask you who your core call, call customer is. Um, I yes. suppose it's anybody. Pregnant women and their families. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so you started 18 months before COVID. Um, can you just take me through the, the, the journey a little bit if you can? Yeah, uh, sure. Um, it was a, like many entrepreneurs, it was a problem for me because when I was 36 weeks pregnant with my daughter, Polly, uh, our local private maternity unit closed its doors. And I'm a bit of a mad keen researcher and a big believer in, as I said, access to healthcare. And even though I was choosing to birth my baby at the public hospital, I felt frustrated that that choice had been removed. And then after I had my daughter, Polly, and we had a reasonably positive birth experience, but we didn't go to birth classes because at the time the classes were inconvenient. We were both working full time. Um, And sorry, just to that, I guess my course and my core client, I call it my avatar, isn't just any pregnant woman. Usually it's the busy pregnant woman, somebody who going to -to face-to-face classes over six evenings is inconvenient for. Um, And so for me personally, we had our daughter And then about six months later, I was really researching about why childbirth education hasn't progressed and hasn't become more modern. Like it was still a very outdated model where you sat around with a bunch of strangers in a room and it felt a bit awkward and you had to ask these questions and it was done over six evenings. And when you're 36 weeks pregnant and you work full time, the thought of having to travel to the hospital, I was like, this is terribly outdated model. So I started teaching them in a really fun, friendly, convenient way. And then we went online and we did that because of the distance that people had to travel regionally. And then actually it was busy women. It was actually in Brisbane, Melbourne and Sydney that we looking at all of our data, saw a lot of our sales and our conversions. And like, I'm really, I think it's super important to speak to your customer you know, why did you choose us? What about this? What, you know, what were your hesitations? Um, and it was just busy women, really. And that's that's really where we got our momentum. I, I mean, I've got, you, you know, we've got a set number of questions, but um, I've got so many questions that come out of that. <laughs> um, and I haven't, I haven't experienced what you do because um, a bit of my back, we adopted two little kitties from Ethiopia, so we didn't actually go through the birth. I oh, didn't have to do that, yeah. Um, but I'm, but I'm sure you're still a parent and a carer, and mm. so the, our baby and child first aid would have been something that okay. during, prior to adopting your babies, right. you could have gone, right, well, we still need to know what to do if they have a fever, if they have a febrile convulsion, if they choke. And so we can deliver okay. all of that online and we wrap a community around you where you can ask questions and speak to health. So we've built all of our platform. And so you can speak to health professionals via our platform. That's how we're unique to just your generic online courses. Okay. So, okay. So let's expand that a little bit. Yes. So my take was 
Um, you, you, you're providing six, you know, six classes in your home via Zoom. You're obviously doing a lot more than that. No, so it's evergreen. You actually log in, you get access straight away and you get to go into the program as often as you like, rewatch it as many times as you like. Sometimes for some families, time might be a challenge. Someone might be travelling. Someone might be, you know, like whatever that situation looks like. English might be a second language and a face-to-face class might not be the most convenient thing. There might be a disability such as a hearing or a physical disability that so. I really focus it around access. There's no reason someone shouldn't be able to access our course. And then when you're a new parent, sometimes it's really nice to hear what other new parents are struggling with. So that's where we introduce the community element and that's done through social media and a closed portal. And then as well, I don't want you going and doctor Googling at 2 a.m. because your little baby has a rash or how old are your children, Jonathan? They're eight. Um but, you know, I've just been through it. Uh, my, my son had a, um, did a trip from Barrow. We were in Barrow, uh, Barrow to um, Randwick Children's Hospital for emergency surgery, but, you know, ambulance lights, you know, lights on. No, lights and sirens. It's an you know, it's like, parent's nightmare. Exactly right. So, yeah, no, I've, if, are you dealing with, you know, what age do you stop? Type Zero to eight. Okay. is the baby and child first day because after the age of eight, you would actually treat them for most first aid conditions as an adult. Okay. Okay. Depending on the size and the weight of child. (laughs) And again, that's from my background because I'm a midwife, but also an emergency nurse and seeing parents coming into the emergency department at three o'clock in the morning, either with a well child who, and they're like, I don't really know what to do. And I was like, this child's fine. Actually a bit of paracetamol and rest is all they need. Yep. To the extreme other side of parents who come in with flat, unresponsive children in their arms going, we just didn't know what to do. And I'm yes. like, there's a big gap there where so much attention is put into you when you're pregnant or when you're expecting a child and then you leave the maternity and it's like, bye, good luck. <laughs> it's yep. just, there's no manual for that and it's, it's not something that you can do with Google and a lot of first aid courses just focus on adults and sort of brush over. So my course is specifically designed for, yes, life-saving first aid, but also croup, asthma, respiratory, you know, rashes, bites, stings, the kind of stuff as a parent yep. you need to know before you go to the ED. Okay. Um, I, wish, I wish we'd known about it. Yeah. <laughs> do you know the amount of people who do the course and go, I wish we'd have known about this? Or I was yeah. telling my friend, I wish we had known about this, which is part of the challenge of scaling is making sure that your market knows about you. You can have a great product, but you've got to make sure people know about it. I'm I'm just sort of sitting there, sitting here thinking about. I woke up one morning with two babies in my arms, you know, (laughs) both in Ethiopia and backwards Ethiopia, and it's like, oh my god, instant, instant dad, an instant family. But how lucky are those children? Oh, well, how lucky we are! I think it's it's actually the thing. Um, So, okay, so you started before before COVID. What actions did you take in COVID that, that have stuck with the business? Yeah, definitely COVID really made a step up in terms of having a presence on social media. So something that I didn't feel personally particularly comfortable with was really putting my message out there on the socials. Um, So we decided, and when I say we, it's just a really small team. It's Michaela, who's a school trainee, who's been with me now for three years. Um, She's a local Indigenous girl and she's just amazing. She's my wing woman. And um, we're like, there's so much misinformation for expecting parents. So we started hosting regular lives on Instagram and that gained in popularity. And then people were coming to us looking for the information that we sold in our courses and that led on to that. Um, So that was very organic growth. Our main distribution channel at the time was B2C, which is just what you see when you look at our website. Um, But we were already set up to white label our software So we then partnered with private hospitals who had to close their doors really quickly and not be able to teach face-to-face classes. So we partnered with private hospitals with the Ramsey Group and St Vincent's Health Australia. And then our third distribution model is actually selling our program into corporates who are really engaged in supporting not only women but expecting parents and families within their workplace who are focused on Recruitment, but also retention, because we know that's where we lose a lot of staff is in that first 12 months after they've had their baby. Um, 
What does what does the future look like? Very good question. I feel like I often, um, if you could see, so I'm, so, I'm, 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 so I'm just sitting here thinking, you've been going what four years? Yeah, four years. And look where you are already. I know it's insane, mm. isn't it? Um, what I was going to say, though, behind me is just this spray of multicolored posters of things that I want to do. Um, I work with a business coach and one of the biggest challenges for me is actually remaining focused on what we're working on at the moment. Um, So, as an organisation, we're continuing to grow and looking at new markets. So, we've just launched with a maternity hospital that has 29 maternity units in India. Um, So, I'm talking with them tonight. Unfortunately, the time difference is not particularly convenient. And yeah, just basically my big driver is how do we support more women and their families in becoming parents? And so, uh, so tell me the size of your team again, you and? Yeah. We're two full-time, we've got two part-time and one EA in the Philippines. So how, I mean, how are you scaling? Tell me yeah. how, how you're scaling. And done. I think, um, so we've done like quite a few, I've done quite a few courses and been recognised for a few awards and things. And I think often there's this real pride that comes with the size of your team. Like when you, you know, oh, so we employ 24 people. And I had this big imposter syndrome when I was like, we're just really small. Like there's four of us, um, you know, I'm kind of embarrassed when I go to these women's business networking and they're like, how many people do you employ? How many people do you employ? But I've managed to turn that on the flip side because our profit margins are really great. We provide scholarships to lots of regional and rural rural areas because our profit margins are really great. And because the way our model is built, we can still, like we've still got a lot of capacity for growth with the team as they are. So I'm systems and processes obsessed. If there's anything that we do three or four times, like, you know, if I go, hey, we've sent that email or that invoice or we've answered that question more than a few times, why is that? And Michaela has been trained to think like that as well now. Um, The other day she just challenged me. She said, you know, we could automate that a little further. And I was like, yes, you know, like that's, that's, like that's a dream to me. And I, I think it's about just working smarter, not harder. I'm also a mother of two. You know, I've got a mother with dementia. I still have a life. I'm not, I'm not, you know, 80 hours in the office. That's not the lifestyle I want to lead. So you, you, must, you, processes. you you must have outsourced tech, the technology side, I assume. We've outsourced a lot. Yes. Um, and we continue to have people just on hours so we don't employ them full time. So we just employ them through blocks of mm-hmm. Right. Now, it's fascinating you talk about the the processes. Um, yeah, as a as a coach, it's it's one of the key things. If I can get um, my clients to focus on the processes, and and you know, I just even think about um, the process of what we're doing right now, this conversation. Yeah. Um, the so I was questioned bit- on that as well, Jonathan. Even Michaela said this morning. So what are you doing at 3.30? I was like, ah, oh, it's sort of this thing that I said that I'd do for a friend. And she was like, is it going to be worth it? Do you know what I mean? Like we really are mm. so particular about our time. Well, and, I, and I think it's, yeah, I, and I think that's, the, the, the you know, a couple of things you've, you've, you've picked up. One, you know, focusing in on what's most important. I spend yeah. most of my time with my clients getting them to focus on the three to five things maximum they're going to yeah. do this quarter, this year, this three years. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and and stopping them doing all the other stuff. Yeah, you know, what are the things that will will swing the dial the, the most? Yeah, and then you know, as I said, you know, the process of this, like you and I know this because we had the conversation just as we started. Was how did you get here? Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sitting here thinking I actually don't know because somebody <laughs> like, and we'll we'll talk about head of, head of the hills. Well, the, your system's clearly working as well. If you get well, really it is. You, know, you, did. I mean, you sent I, me I, all the email reminders. You sent me yeah. the text message, and I'm. It's all automated. It's all automated. Yep. Um, the you know, the the selection, you know, finding the people we want to speak to is done by a VA. Yeah. After here, there's a whole process of you know, let's do the slides, intro and outro. None of which I do. No. Um, all I do is have a conversation. It's sent off to the Ukraine to Vitaly, who's a video editor, and he that's my little bit I'm doing for yeah. doing for the Ukraine. 
he does his bit, it comes back, you know, another VA takes over the hosting, like, um, and it's all a process. And as you said, you know, you've received, because um, a lot of people don't know how this works, but I use a thing called Calendly, which, um, you know, book appointments. So the first thing I know about you is when you appear in my calendar. Yeah. But in the, in the background, the workflow there is, you know, you'll receive an introductory email um, with the question so you, you, you can prepare. The day before you received a, a follow-up email with the questions. In the meantime, today you'll receive at least one of not two texts reminding you. Um, yeah, and it's all a process and a workflow. Exactly. It works yeah. too. Yeah, it does. Because your time's not then wasted when I don't show up at 3.30. And, and that's, that's exactly, exactly the point. The only point is when you don't show up, my failure in my process of the mode is it's an automatic email that gets sent, it's sent out saying thank you, and I've got to work out how to fix it. <laughs> okay. So that's thank you problem. for not showing up and wasting my time. That's right. <laughs> but no, it's, it's really it's, it's you know, getting these processes right. And the other thing is it, it builds, um, I've got the wrong word, but succession. In. You know, yes. if I lose a staff member, all of these yep. processes are documented. And including yep. the actual text of the email, everything is documented. Yeah. So written above my home office desk is only do what only you can do. Exactly. And right. often I'll sit there and I'll look at it and I'll think, why am I doing this? I'm like, this is not good use of my time. It's a great, it's a great thing to have it. You know, I just, one of the things I coach is a unique ability. Do what you, you know, you're really good at and you're really yeah. passionate about and delegate the rest. Yes. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can't always do that on day one, but it's building that up. Hmm. Let's get back to where we were. Okay. Um, what do you reckon has been the biggest learning? And you may have just answered that, the biggest learning um, you've had since being a business owner. Um, I think for me it is identifying what my strengths are. So I actually love the chaos. I love the forming. I love the idea, the creative stage. I don't love systems and processes. So having to you know, really execute a lot of, like, a, it's it's hard work for me to do that, yep. um, but acknowledging as well that I needed to do it the first time and now as much as I can delegating the systems and processes stuff because it's just not my happy place. Yeah. Which is, again, a lot of entrepreneurs that I meet and that's where they fall over they're like, we've had this wonderful big idea and we want to share it with the world, but actually to make the business work and tick and be sustainable and make money and, you know, pay tax and do all the things that you actually need to do, it does require some systems and process. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have to be you. That's where it will often fall over, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a very good point. And as I said, yeah, just in this process we're doing here, um, I think uh, there were five people involved in it. Um, yeah. None of whom work um, full time. You know, they're all you know, special. Yeah, you know, they have their own unique abilities. They come together for their for their little bit. Yeah, yeah. which is very um, smart. When you think of the word successful, who comes to mind and why? Oof. Um, so when you said that, a heap of people came to my mind, but I'm actually going to go back to Michaela, who works for me. So I think when we say success or successful, and I've been through a lot, I've done a lot of personal coaching, a lot of professional coaching, and I've experienced a lot of doubt and imposter syndrome. Um, and Michaela came to Birthbeat when she was 18 and had never been in the business world. And every day she's problem solving, she's maintaining our website, our social media, our strategy, our copywriting, like she's just incredible. And I just get so excited watching her. She's currently successful, but I also get excited seeing like what will she become in this world? It will be something really amazing. You make sure you um you show her this one when it comes up. <laughs> oh, she'll die of embarrassment. She'll be like, oh <laughs> but um it's just you know, like it does. It really excites me. And I love having her by my side on this journey. I wished I had have had that at 21. It's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's, um, yeah. Um, yeah, that, the, the concept of, men, of, of, of mentoring um, people, you know, we send them off to, to do degrees and, you know, 
in many ways, I believe they get so much snatched for if they had the right mentor. Yeah, or, she, or she came to me. She was going to take twelve months off. She was off to do law. She'd already been accepted into uni. Ducks of a school, incredibly bright. Um, and I sometimes I'm like, you sure you don't want to go to uni still? Like, like I feel bad, but I also don't want to ever lose her. And I think she's learned so much more. Yeah. Um, okay. Do you have time to read books, um, listen to podcasts? Any you'd recommend? So again, very. Um, I think I am a reader, so we don't own a television. So I also think that's oh, a good life hack. Yeah. Um, so my husband uh, and I. So how, how, how old are your children? Uh, eight and ten. You yeah. Don't have TV? Wow. No, we don't. They do get to watch their iPads on the weekend. Um, mm-hmm. So, but no screens during the week. And awesome. we're really diligent around that. We've never had a television since having children, which all of our friends think is completely weird. Uh, but we all read a lot. Like, so even my eight and ten year old, they love reading, which is great. Um, so I read a lot and I listen to a lot of podcasts because we live out of town. So unlike you, I have yep. to travel into the office and I travel a lot in my car. So I think you already mentioned Tim Ferriss and I love Tim Ferriss. I I have definitely come back to listening to more Australian-based business podcasts. Um, I was on Mark Boris's The Mentor and I like his sort of no BS approach. Um, I really like Lady Scale Up, so the Lady Startup stories that um, the Mamma Mia group do. I think they're very real. They ask very real questions. I love just a bit of, um, you know, conversations as well. Yeah. Anything anything around ABC, I'm a bit of a nerd that way. Yeah, Richard Feidler, I love. I love Richard Feidler. Um, I love him from the good old Doug Anthony All-Stars days, which is really going to show my age. <laughs> Uh, but books, I always gift books. Like I always, if I meet women who are like, oh, I'm interested in this or I want to do this. And okay, books. so what's, what's your most gifted yeah. book? So there's two books that I gift a lot. Um, I am doing more work in the board and governance space. And so if someone's interested in that area and they want to talk to me about that, I give them Wendy McCarthy's Don't Be Too Polite Girls, which is a brilliant book. And Wendy is a trailblazer for health and education. and governance and board work in Australia, just, you know, and I, I've i met her, I admire her so much. She's an incredible mentor to so many women and just like a genuinely no fuss, fabulous woman um, who managed to just balance it, it seems, so beautifully. So I absolutely adored her book and I recommend that and I've gifted it to so many women. The next one is probably not as popular in this sort of business and professional personal leadership, but it's called You Are a Badass at Making Money. Um, It's Jen Sincero. I can't remember who recommended this book to me, but again, for a lot of women in business, I think there's this guilt around wanting to be remunerated or wanting to be successful financially, particularly women who are coming out of health or education space, which is an area that I really work in, Um, and just being aware of maybe how your parents or your family influenced your thoughts around wealth because when I started the business, I was like, I'm not a flashy person. I don't, like, I love my Toyota. I don't need anything fancy. Um, But it was somebody who just realigned me with that. It was like, well, what good could you do in the world with more wealth? And it's not about my personal wealth. So my husband and I are in a situation now through the success of our businesses that we can give really generously, that I can invest in startups, that I can meet kick-ass women and go, that is a great business idea and you're going somewhere. And it's really hard to find money when you're at that small stage. So I can go, hey, here's some money and I'd I'd love to be an investor. Um, And that really excites me. I don't need the fancy car or the fancy handbags. I will take fancy shoes, though. I've got a soft spot for those. (laughs) (laughs) So, listen, I'll come back at you. So, my um, the book I give away the most is Legacy by James Kerr. Oh, yes. Um, So, James Kerr is a leadership coach, um, a Kiwi who's based out of the... I was going to say, that's in our bookshelf, and I have read that, and my husband always talks about the All Blacks. Um, Well, so, yeah, so James Kerr, he was embedded with the All Blacks for for 12 months. And he wrote the story of the All Blacks values, and it's yeah. a fabulous story because they, you know, everything you're talking about is is uh, you know is about the values of you and your business. Yeah. And, um, you know, 
So James Kerr was the, the guy who came up with the, the line of, you know, we always clean up the sheds as an example. Yes, so that exactly. is if I turn this off, this back experience over off, which I'm not because it's so messy in my office at the moment, <laughs> um, but I've got 50 of these books on the bottom shelf here, which I'm, and I've got um, 50 envelopes here because they're going out to my clients. And ah, that's awesome. <laughs> the other one is um, Who Not How. But my coach is the guy called Dan Sullivan out of the out of the US. So yeah, you know, I always have a, I've always got a couple of coaches coaching me. Yeah. He wrote a book called Who Not How. Who Not so, How. Yeah, Writing by Dan now. Sullivan. It's you're doing it already. Um, so who not how was coined by a guy. Well, I'm not sure who it came from. Um, he says it came from a guy called um, Dean Jackson. Um, I'm sure he, he, Dan, Dean told him, but um, uh, Jim Collins, who is you know, yeah. one of my key mentors, he yeah. he coined the concept of who not how. So before you even start thinking about what you're going to do or how you're going to do it, find a who. Yeah. You know, a bit like you with, with the software development. De- yeah. development. Um, and the other one you mentioned, imposter syndrome. Yeah. If you haven't um, seen it, Mike Cannon Brooks uh, did a TEDx talk on, on imposter syndrome. It's fabulous. I have seen it. Right. And okay. I, did, I did, when somebody told me about that, they said, also, if you don't have a bit of imposter syndrome, you're a sociopath. So <laughs> I was like, right, I'm not a sociopath. Well, it is. There is an argument. That there's all, always a positive. <laughs> no, there's an argument that all entrepreneurs have some form of ADHD, and I think that's probably right. Oh, 100%. Somebody asked me the other day, do I have adult ADHD? And I was like, oh, like, you know, probably. probably um, like as a child I was called motor mouth and, you know, <laughs> ran little side hustles and cut flowers out of my neighbour's gardens, packaged <laughs> them up and then sold them back to them. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Oh, that's the other one. Children's um, got um, um, uh, um, the guy who wrote the um, uh, the investment book. Um, oh yeah, um, I know who you're talking about. Barefoot Investor. Barefoot Investor. Oh, hey, his, his um, Barefoot Investor for Kids is fabulous. Yep, yep. we're we're big fans of the Barefoot Investor. Yeah, well, I've just bought it one for each of my children. So, ah, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, um, last question. Then I wanted to hit on something else. Like, any last piece of advice for um, CEO, entrepreneur, aspiring entrepreneur out there? I, I'm probably not so much CEOs, but I'm going to say entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs is just get started. I say this to everyone, the paralysis of perfection, the it's not quite right yet, I don't want to put it out to the market. I just meet so many people, they're like, I have this amazing idea. And then when I start actually questioning them about what they've done, an idea doesn't just turn into a business. It doesn't just turn into a solution. Just get started because it's when you get started that you'll go, okay, this has either got legs or it hasn't. Um, But you don't want to kick yourself for not getting started. But I just feel like, like I'm all about momentum. If you just get the wheels rolling, that that's where you'll get some progress. Absolutely great advice. Um, now, so I, would ju- I know, now I want to just jump onto heads over here, uh, head over here. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, Thank so incredible by, way, by way of background to everybody listening, I um, <laughs> this podcast is a, is a great example of get, get started. I like, come up with the idea we started and didn't I actually mm-hmm. even know how to record on Zoom at the time. But um, along the way, I um, we're, this is interview number fifty one, and yeah. along the way, I met a lady called Mandy Sigaloff. Oh yeah, yeah. And interviewed her, and it was a fabulous interview. And I said to Mandy at the end, you know, my problem is finding female entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. said, oh, I've got the answer for you. And um, it's called Head Over Heels. Could you tell people, uh, to tell the audience Absolutely. a little bit about, uh, about Head Over Heels? And I'm not ignoring you there. I've just realised I've come into this little office without my charger. So if our phone goes dead, okay. I'm super sorry. Uh, I've texted somebody to bring me one. Uh, so the way I can explain heads over heels and often finding finance or having the door opened and speak to the right person can be really challenging, particularly if yes. you're a woman in business and particularly if you're a founder or you're at early stages. So Heads Over Heels was founded by a bunch of women who are super passionate about supporting other women. And essentially, they've worked out how to scale opening the little, little black book being able to offer a warm introduction. And so they take, I think it's six to eight companies each year under their wing and we do events and we pitch and we pitch to an incredible bunch of Australian and New Zealand business owners who then 
it's like the ripple effect. We pitch and say what we're looking for are introductions to this person. So for me, it would be I want introductions to the C-suite or HR directors for companies who would introduce our program in their benefits program for expecting parents. Like that's my pitch. The benefit to the company is improved retention, great for recruitment. Do you know, we work with lots of legal firms. I pitch that at a heads over heels event and then all of their partners then help spread the word. So it's just, I I sort of say it's like um, the old fashioned men's clubs where you get to meet people and meet and be welcomed into a network, but they get to do, they've done that really at scale. Fabulous. Yeah. So for my listeners, we're going to have some fabulous women in the next you know, series of podcasts because I think Thanks. so far um, we, I'm doing a little bit of collaboration with Head Up and Girls and I think I've got four, um, at, least, at least four of you are going, are going to do interviews with me and including the new CEO who we're doing next week. So Fabulous. it'll be quite interesting. And if and you I will say, sorry, I will yes, say just really quickly, just to that, um, when you asked something about, you know, what's my bit of advice, also like show up, follow up. They're something that I always say. So um, I got an opportunity to be on Shark Tank a couple of years ago and that was because they wanted women in business, they wanted regional women in businesses and I said, yeah, I'll find some for you. I I wasn't going to be me but no one would do it. I was like, you know, we sometimes complain about not being given opportunity but you also have to take opportunity and create Mm -hmm. opportunity. So show up and then follow up would be also my advice. That people is. will say, oh, I emailed them. And I'm like, people are busy, man. Like, yep. do you know what I mean? You followed me up with three emails and a text message. That's what I would expect. If I've got a meeting and I book it through Zoom or Calendly, they will get that as well. Yeah. No, very, very good point. Hmm. So as a general offer out there, ladies, um, I'm offering 90 minutes to um, two hours co- um, coaching. If anybody would like it, just reach out to me. There you go. And, like, okay. do it. Why yeah, not? exactly right. Because you, you'll always learn something. Exactly right. Um, thank you so much, Elena. My pleasure. I've Thanks enjoyed the conversation. Me. I've enjoyed the conversation enormously. Yeah, me too. Thank you. And look forward to speaking again soon. Okay. Bye. Bye.